All right, welcome everybody to this uh, KSP ISS video. In this video, we're going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to do the launch of Progress MS-16. So um, Progress MS-16 is the most recent Progress cargo craft to go to the ISS, and it's got a special goal. Uh, it's going to do what every Progress does, which is deliver cargo and then become a trash can. But it's also going to remove the Pierce uh, module uh, to make way for the next Russian science module. So I thought uh, just to change it up a little bit and do something different, we're going to actually do a full launch and docking with the ISS. So uh, I'm going to be using MechJeb's ascent guidance and some of the other readouts. And what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure that we can select our ISS orbiting at 420 kilometers above, set that as our target. And we're going to launch into the plane of the target. And the periapsis that the that Progress MS-16 launched into was 193 by 240. Um, we are using uh, technically a Soyuz U rocket, whereas the Progress 16 was launched on a Soyuz 2.1A. Uh, I think it's a little bit more powerful and a little more capable. But uh, if we need to, we'll use Progress's uh, onboard uh, engine to get us where we need to go. So I'm going to go ahead and engage the autopilot and we're going to quickly go through the hour here until the ISS is right above us and we'll do our launch into it. And counting down here right here 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Mission and liftoff. Liftoff of Progress MS 16 on its way to deliver supplies and cargo to the International Space Station. Make sure I didn't ask right. um, But this is a Soyuz rocket, the Soyuz 2.1A is what it uh, launched on. As you can see, it did a quick uh, roll maneuver which uh, the Soyuz 2.1A can do, uh, which other Soyuz rockets couldn't do, which allows it to not have to be turned on the pad or launched in a particular direction. You see here we've got our pitch over maneuver. But uh, yeah, so standard Soyuz launch uses the four side boosters and a core booster as the first and second stages. After just under two minutes, the side boosters will come off, and then the core will continue going. Uh, eventually, the um, the fairings would go uh, a little bit afterwards. But in our case, because of the way we have it set up, the fairings are going to go pretty quickly after the uh, after the side boosters come off. But we should be well into the upper aspects of the atmosphere, and so, though not technically exactly correct, it should be able to do that. So, for right now, we're just going to enjoy this. Uh, so, so you, or sorry, Progress MS-16 launched from Baikonur Site 31 on February 15th, 2021, and it is not, was not planning on doing a quick uh, rendezvous to the 34 two-day day rendezvous orbit. And, uh, so dark on February 17th. Usually the way that they do that is to do a lot of different maneuvers uh, to slowly kind of raise the orbit. We're going to do as much, I mean, as close as we can to a single uh, Holman transfer and see if we can't get that done. Let's look at our stats here. We've got about 30 seconds left in the booster stage. See our plume is getting quite extended now because we are already 30,000 meters into the air, quite a bit into our into our uh, into the atmosphere. So still got 20 seconds left. But yeah, the uh, side boosters will come off in the famous Korolev cross, named after Sergei Korolev, who was the original designer of the R-7 rocket. So pretty cool they're still doing that in a small little homage too. 
Suke Cola. So let's watch that happen now. Four, three, two, one. There go. Korloff cross. And there go our fairings. Again, in real life, the fairings would wait a little bit uh, so they wouldn't separate so close to the boosters, and I don't think the boosters go that far away from each other. Uh, maybe a little too much to pull that down, but that's okay. We're now on our core core booster. That's going to go for another 2 minutes and 20 seconds. So, as you can see here, here's the progress. Similar looking to the Soyuz, filled with cargo. And, uh, yeah, so we're just going above Kazakhstan here, and yeah, we're just on our way. So, the, uh, this mission, this progress mission is pretty important in the fact that it's going to remove the Pierce. The Pierce has been on there um, for a very long time. Uh, I think the Pierce got there in 2001, so the Pierce has been there for 20 years. So, um, it's an old module, but uh, the next one that's coming up is the Nakua, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, could be wrong about that, let me know. But um, on, the, on the way, which is something that we'll just have to do because we're doing a Kerbal Space Program, but on the, uh, on the way, when it was close to docking, within like, I think it was 50 meters, the KERS system, which is the normal automatic docking system, failed. And so, uh, Sergei Reiskov, I think is how you pronounce that, Reiskov, uh, Reiskov, uh, whatever, uh, he took the control in the, um, in the space station and actually guided it using the TORU system. So, um, it was important to be able to have backups when you need it. And uh, that's what they used. Progress MS-16, so very important to be able to do. We are, uh, our apoapsis is above the carbon line. We're almost above the carbon line. We're significantly increasing our horizontal speed and our vertical speed is decreasing. You can see those ticking up at the top there. But uh, so far so good. Uh, I think we'll be able to make orbit. And still see, I guess, the shadows of our four side boosters and two fairings, I guess that's what that is. So, yeah, what we're going to do, uh, what happens out here uh, is a hot staging. So what you'll see here is this, the third stage will light and then disconnect, and that's the hot staging that allows the, the fuel to settle and be pressurized in the right way by the forward momentum and doesn't cease when you do that staging so that's uh, it's a neat, neat little trick and it's cool that Curl Space Program can do that now so now we're on a third stage third stage is going to be burning for three minutes and five seconds uh, it's got obviously lower thrust than uh, that core stage especially towards the end um, but we're still at a 1.14 thrust to weight ratio so, still making our way up, and uh, another two minutes or so before we uh, before we get there. As I was explaining before, the progress is basically unmanned. Um, uh, obviously, it can be taken over by manual control if it needs to, which they did need to. Um, progress MS. 16, uh, but most of the time it's just automatic, and it can dock to the Pierce or the Poisk if it needs to, and the aft end of uh, the Svezda, so it can pretty much dock anywhere the Soyuz can. I suppose it could dock to the Ross Viet if it needed to, I'm not sure it ever really does, that I can remember, but yeah, two minutes left in this burn. That should get us most of the way to orbit. It looks like we're going to be using 216 meters per second of delta V from our progress 
stage uh, progress engine, which as you can see, burns for a very long time, 55 minutes. Um, so even a couple hundred meters per second is gonna take us 535 seconds. We may just uh, time warp through that at least uh, to make it a little bit quicker for everybody, just cause that would be uh, several minutes and not the most exciting. But we're at uh, 173,000 meters. We've got about a minute left of this burn. And so I think if we had it at a pretty at a lower apoapsis, uh, we'd probably have a little bit easier time making orbit with this stage. But um, I think with the uh, it's like 16, almost 1,700 meters per second of delta V in the progress state. We will have plenty to be able to get to orbit, even if we have to use 216 of it to get into our proper orbit. So that's all right. We'll do that, and uh, you know, no big deal. seconds left in this third stage and at 10 seconds we'll make it look pretty all right she's gonna burn off the last and the progress engine should start pretty much immediately oh boy oh no oh that is horrible. Get back, get back. All right, well, we're going to have not a traditional orbit. <laughs> we lowered, lowered our orbit a bit. The orbit's coming back. Probably should have done the RCS on that one, but it's all right. It's making its way back into the proper orientation. So, a uh, little attitude correction. And, uh, a uh, little kitty wampus. That should be all right. We're getting back to our correct attitude here. But we're rotating. We don't want to rotate. All right. Well, still salvaged it. Almost, almost had a little incident that they. We did not have on Progress MS-16. That was my fault for not engaging the RCS at the right time. That's all right, we're back to where we need to be. And while we're doing this burn, we'll extend this solar panel. And we'll extend this solar panel. It looks like I've got the forced roll, so it's gonna wanna turn back. We will deploy the Kerr's antenna and also this antenna back here. So now our antennas are deployed, solar panels are out. So is, is, or sorry, progress is rotating to the proper orientation. And we're back to where we should have been. So let's, uh, let's do a quick time warp here and try to decrease this a little bit. I'm gonna also push it with the RCS motors to see if we can decrease that. About 400 seconds, that's, that's four minutes. So I wanna try to make sure that we can do this in a way that's still somewhat entertaining. I know a lot of my ISS videos are pretty long anyway, but this is one mission. So should be able to, uh, to do this relatively quickly. All right, 300 seconds it says going down. Uh, it's just about, it'll probably be 30 seconds or so, right? 26, 25, 24, it's pretty close, maybe another 30 seconds or so. Right, we're below 100 seconds, or 200 seconds now. So we are Definitely making the right orbit. 
And now two minutes if we want four times time warping. And all right. 90 seconds. You can see we're trying to trying to get 51.6 and uh, that's the orbital inclination which is pretty close. Let's say we do the last 30 seconds of this as we should. Looks like wants to get us in a better almost straight on attitude. That makes sense. And 10 more seconds and we'll be at our orbit. All right, we have achieved orbit. Progress number 16 in orbit. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll close our ascent guidance. We've made that. We'll open our maneuver planner. Already got the ISS selected. We're in the right plane. So we're going to, let's see, we're gonna do a bi-impulsive transfer to target, create that node. The node is gonna be in one day and two hours. That's within our uh, limitations of two day rendezvous orbit. So we're gonna get there a little bit faster than Progress MS-16 did. But let's go ahead and move towards that maneuver node. pretty slowly because you can see it moves quite a bit as we so let's remove that and yeah okay we'll get up there slowly but surely and once we get the right attitude we'll just go ahead and time warp to one day and two hours close enough for me so here we go whoop whoop whoa watch out if you have uh, epilepsy or any other condition that might make this not good for you but we're moving in the right direction here All right, getting close to our 52.5 meters per second. And we'll let that I'm gonna oleage burn. And here we go, two minute burn. So as you can see, the specific impulse on progress in Soyuz propulsion is significantly low. I mean, our CS has got 285. Our thrust is three kilonewtons. Um, so specific impulse of 302 seconds, but 28 ignitions remaining. So that's pretty good. We'll be able to do that quite a bit. Um, see, we've burned off quite a bit of our fuel already though apparently um, so that's interesting but very fuel efficient but not super powerful but that's all right we're gonna be able to get where we need to go so no big deal all right one more minute left in this Ah, that was nice, right? That cover doesn't isn't open, though. That's not correct. That's all right. If you do get this uh, MS pack, you'll notice that the docking ports don't uh, work. They, they won't actually dock with the, the mirror ports that I use on my ISS version. So I've had to modify the old um, old uh, rear neck, I think, uh, 
Soyuz in progress docking ports. And then I just made a black DDS file and so that it would match with the rest of it. So hopefully this will get us to dock. And we're now three meters per second, one meter per second, and we are there. Cool. Let's keep our attitude using the RCS. And what does it have us? 1.7 kilometers, that's not too bad. Can we get any closer with our RCS? Yeah. No, 1.5 looks like what we'll be able to get. All right, good. So what we're gonna do is that's close enough for me. We are gonna match the velocities with our target at our closest approach. And we are going to just time warp over there. That is gonna be pretty well in the dark. Oh, it'll be pretty close to sunlight, so hopefully that that will work. And, uh, yeah, this has got us a little different, but that's all right. It's a 64 meter per second burn. So we're going to want to slowly make our way to the ISS. It's right in front of us. That's it right there. So hopefully we can track it as we continue going. Oh, it seems to disappear. There it is, we got it in our sights. At four minutes, we will do our flip and get our attitude correct. There's four minutes, we're back in the sunlight. That's good, we can see the ISS. So we'll go ahead and aim towards our maneuver. The uh, RCS on the progress can sometimes be difficult, but should be okay. <clears throat> and uh, this is not exactly the approach that they do to the ISS directly. This would, I think, be far too close for comfort to do uh, the burn. I mean, we're not, you know, we're still a mile or a kilometer and a half away, but I think that's way too close for comfort for the ISS. But this is Kerbal Space Program. We can do it. No big deal. All right, that's weird. My, oh, my solar flare is not very great. I'll have to figure out why that is. If anybody's got an idea why that happens, I've got the right solar flare file on my computer, but alas. So we are near there. And I'm just going to have it execute next node. Because it is quickly approaching us, and we want to start that burn as soon as possible. So come on, get there. How are we... We're still very stable, so we should be able to start that burn. That's going to do it in a minute in. There it goes, okay. So we might trail behind it as it passes above us. Alright, here we go. Two minutes and 23 seconds to do our matching velocities so you know just as a background the, what we did there was basically got into the same orbital inclination then the space station was higher in our orbit so we burned uh, to increase our orbit at the right time after about a day and a couple hours and that allowed us to have the right time to be able to burn up to to increase our apoapsis to 420 and now essentially what we're doing is circularizing our orbit um, but we're doing it to basically match the velocities with the ISS that's above us so the idea is basically that you're you know, traveling at you know, as 13,000 miles an hour but you know at our square horizontal speed is 7,314 meters per second um, but so is the ISS. And so all we're doing is really matching the velocity, the orbital velocity with the space station. That'll allow us the ability to, uh, 
to sort of stay station keeping with it and then eventually dock right to it. So it's just a kilometer away from us now. Let's see if we can ah look at that. Beautiful. And we're gonna be looking for that pierce, which looks like it's about right here. But we are real close to it. And uh, like I said, this would be way too close for comfort, I think, uh, in the real ISS, but we can do it. It is, in principle, possible. And if this, you know, if some, for some reason the engine didn't fire or something like that, it would, its apoapsis would be down at 240, so it would, it wouldn't match with the ISS, so it probably wouldn't be as dangerous, but still I think they want to err, err on the side of caution, which I understand. So alright, we are now basically station keeping with the ISS, which is good. And we're gonna bring our attitude uh, apparently we are no longer in radio contact. How is that? Got electric charge. So let's just time warp until we are in radio contact. There we go. Now we've got radio contact again. And we should be able to maneuver. Good. We did start drifting away. So I'm going to fire our maneuvering thrusters to decrease our relative velocity, which is now one meters per second going the opposite way. And we're decreasing that. We're going to stay with our target. All right, we are now going from moving away to moving towards. And we are going to want to go towards the station. And I'd say we could probably do three meters per second if we really wanted to. It's burning right towards it. So let's go ahead and move ourselves just so that we're pointing right in that direction and do another 30 or 30 second or so burn so that we can get up to let's say 2.5 2.5 meters per second should be pretty good we can slowly approach the station all right and we'll go ahead and just do a time warp there. So here we are approaching the station, slowly drifting below it, but that's okay. Getting closer and closer now. And I'm just gonna slow the time warp and adjust our movement more towards it, good. All right, 500 meters from the station. Approaching just as we need to. We're lined up pretty good with that Pierce actually. Pierce is right here. Let's decrease that time warp. Let's keep going towards the station. No, no, I'm not too worried about attitude quite yet. All right. We are within 200 meters of the station. And that's our Pierce module right here. I think we can set that as our target. Not sure why we can't set it as a target. That's all right. We'll get a little closer. Still at 1.5 meters per second. 
So let's get even closer, huh? All right, we can see it here. And we're gonna wanna decrease our velocity. Now I can set it as my target. Good. I'm gonna go towards it still. And what I'm gonna do is point directly at it. hot so I'm going to slow it down to 0.5 meters per second and let's figure out our relative attitude here so what I'm going to want to do is line up here That's good. And we're going to want to go a little below our target. It's a little too far. All right, so it's not quite the approach that they, they use on the actual ISS. That uh, they line up a lot farther back than we are right now. But our goal is basically to get docked. And we don't need to do the pretty approach that they do. But we're within 20 meters now, so we're actually pretty close. And we're just going to try to close out. What we're going to try to do is just slip in underneath here. And I'm going to have it set so that it stays with the target here. We're going to want to go a little bit more underneath it here. Here we go, we're kind of swinging around now. Looks like the right attitude. Still coming in below, which is good. Just want to keep the uh, velocity going towards the target. I remember reading in the Soyuz, Apollo Soyuz test project that you gotta you gotta keep some velocity going forward, otherwise it just seems weird. Uh, it's hard to tell what you're really doing. So we're gonna keep it going here. We're gonna increase, keep that, keep sliding underneath it. See, that's could still slide underneath it a little bit, but we're getting close. All 
All right, we're very slowly approaching, but we are losing our forward momentum here. So we're getting a little kitty wampus on that. There we go. Still want to stay going towards the target four meters. Or a little, a little awkward. Come on, stay with it. Moving backwards a little bit, that's okay. Just means we're lined up. Alright, here we go. And again, not the most perfect docking in the world. But I'd say that's a soft capture. Something is preventing my hard dock. Ah, what is preventing it? Nothing. I should be good. Ooh, we are having troubles with our progress, MS-16, too. Come on, baby. Get in there. Well, I'll have to see, I'll have to look in my configs and figure out why this isn't making the connection it's supposed to. I'm, gu I'm guessing that this mirror probe is maybe upside down. I don't, I'm not sure. But this is a docking to me. That is Progress MS-16 docking with the International Space Station. I'm gonna call that a successful mission even though not technically there. There you go. Progress MS-16, dock to the station, ready to rock and roll. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, like and subscribe. Check out the other ISS videos. And next time, uh, we'll see, see about doing the light, latest Cygnus launch. So, all right. Until next time, take it easy.